All righty. Um, have you guys been following in our Bible reading plan? The last chapter we read was Revelation chapter 12. And that's what I'm going to base my message on today is Revelation uh, chapter 12. If you would go there. It's only 17 verses, so we're going to read the whole chapter. Revelation chapter 12. And in verse 1 it says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you for sending your son uh, to be born of a virgin, who is the savior of the world. Uh, we pray that you be with each and every one of us today, Lord, that's thought it was important enough to come and hear your word and, and bless your holy name. I pray that you be with me, Lord, and fill me with your spirit to preach your word with truth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. As we just read there in uh, Revelation chapter 12, it says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. We have a problem in this world. And uh, the, the problem is that Satan hates us. And he wants to deceive us. In verse 3 it says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. What that's saying is there that, you know, one third of the angels followed after Satan. And Satan sent them down into the earth. And they're fighting against us. That's one of our problems is, you know, the workers of Satan are constantly fighting against us. And that is our problem. 
In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And that's not sometime in the future. You know, that's now. Uh, devil and all of his uh, angels, which is one-third of the angels that God created. They're all against us. If you would go to uh, Matthew chapter 12. Here in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 4, it says, His tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. If we look down at verse 9, it says, or if, in verse 9 it says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Uh, we don't know how much uh, one-third of the angels are, but in Matthew chapter 12, let me get there real quick. Or in verse 9, we learned that, you know, these are his angels. In Matthew chapter 12, if you look down at verse 22, it says, Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Our King James Bible says devils. All the new uh, perversions say uh, demons. But this right here says that uh, Satan is the prince of the devils. And we can see right here back in verse 22 it says, Then was brought unto, one, brought unto him one possessed with a devil. And uh, we don't necessarily see uh, devils in people today, but they're there. All you have to do is look out into the world. There's crazy people everywhere. And that's one thing that uh, is against us, is Satan and all his devils, which is one-third. And like I said earlier, uh, we don't know how many one-third is. But in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, it says, But ye are come unto Mount Sion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. So if Satan cast out one-third of the angels, uh, that verse said that two-thirds is still left and they're innumerable. Well, that would mean that one-third is also innumerable uh, because that's only half the amount that's left. So those are also innumerable. That's how many uh, devils from Satan that we have to deal with in the world, innumerable. We don't know how many. It's uh, probably just as many as people as there is on the earth. That's how many one-third is. If you would, go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. What are these angels of Satan doing while they're down here? Back in Matthew chapter 12, it says they're here possessing people. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11... Look down at verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13, it says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13, it says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. We just read that uh, his ministers are going to be transformed into ministers of righteousness, whose end should be according to their works. It says, and marvel, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So not only are we dealing with uh, people being possessed with devils, but you walk into the church house today and they're up there preaching what, we, what, they, uh, what seems to be right. 
But this right here says that, uh, you know, they're uh, transformed into ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their work. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. So we only have to deal with uh, these, uh, these devils out in the world. But, uh, you know, a lot of people are dealing with them in their church today, being deceived. They sound uh, like they're uh, making a, a good uh, testimony of Jesus, but in reality, uh, they're just transforming themselves into angels of light, and they're really deceiving people. If you would, go to 1 John. 1 John chapter 3. The problem we have is that we're being attacked from every side. You know, the devil's out in the world possessing people, causing people to do crazy things. And the devil's in the churches. You know, the Bible says the devil has a roaring lion, his innumerable angels of light, evil men and seducers. So how do we fight all that? You know, the truth is we can't. Uh, not in this flesh, but Jesus can. And if you're there in John, uh, 1 John chapter 3, down in verse 7, 1 John 3, 7, it says, Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose... The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. We can't fight those battles, but Jesus can. And when we're in Jesus, then we can fight those battles because he fights those battles for us. But we have to be in Jesus. The unsaved people, uh, they can't fight those battles. They're just going to be deceived. Back in Revelation, uh, chapter 12, in Isaiah 9, 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. You know, I just slipped that in there, but that was John three sixteen. In Isaiah 9, 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. In Revelation 12, if you guys went back there, down at verse 10, it says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength to the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. If you would uh, go to Luke chapter 2. A lot of people say that this hasn't happened yet, what we're reading here in Revelation chapter 12. And... Uh, you know, that that's sometime in the future. And that's, that's true. But don't think for a second that Satan hasn't read this book. He knows what's coming. You know, he read this book before it was even written. And uh, because the Bible says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. You know, God created his word in the beginning. Satan knew this word all the way from the beginning. That's why he hates us, because he knows his end. So we know that he's read this uh, because he's been making his own copies. And that's a fact. There's, uh, there's like 600 new translations that came out in the past, you know, 20 years. 
throughout the world. And that's just crazy. He's been making his own copies of this book. You know, every year at my in-laws, uh, somebody stands up uh, during Christmas time and reads Luke chapter 2. Uh, you know, 1 through 20, the birth of Christ. And uh, last year, somebody got up and read Luke chapter 2 from the translation, uh, The Message. And I don't know if you guys know this, but The Message is the preferred translation of the LBGTQ HIV crowd. And uh, I can't argue with that uh, because I believe it is. You know, that's the... Uh, LGBTQ's favorite uh, translations. That's what they read. And uh, but what are they trying to do with all these uh, new translations? They're trying to kill the Word of God. Uh, we have the Word of God from the beginning. Jesus says, "Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away." I don't know if they know what that word, the words, mean. But that means the words, uh, what we have right here. They're trying to kill the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. In Revelation 19, 13, it says, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of God. They're trying to stop the word of God. And that's not anything that's new. In Genesis chapter 3, the serpent said to Eve, Yea, hath God said? In the end of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, the last warning that God gives was, Don't take away from my words and don't add to my words. In the beginning, that was the first thing that the serpent did was try to change and make somebody doubt God's word. There's nothing new. If you guys there in, in uh, the book of Luke, let me get there real quick. Chapter 2, look down at verse 25. It says, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And that same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. It says, For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. And that's what Christmas is all about, the coming of Jesus, the birth of Jesus. And that's, that's what we're celebrating. If you would go to uh, Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. Back in Revelation chapter 12. In verses 3 it says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. You know, there's nothing new under the sun. If you're there in Matthew chapter 2, this is the other account of Jesus' birth. Matthew chapter 2. Starting in verse 1. It says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. 
When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, art not thou least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. See, Herod had only one interest, and that was to kill the Word of God. The Word of God is Jesus. And just as a side note, when we're there in uh, verse 15, if you look down there, it says that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet. A lot of people say that this book is written by man, but this verse right here says it was spoken of the Lord by the prophet. You know, the prophet is just a man writing down God's words, but it's God's words. So I was talking about the new versions earlier. Why do they accept and teach from these new Bibles? They're just another Herod trying to kill the Word of God because they want to rule instead of Jesus. They're more interested in what they want, what they want the Bible to say than what Jesus says. Like it says there in verse 15, uh, these are the words of God. They hate the Word of God. They hate Jesus. That's why they want to change the Bible. When these pastors get up there and they're uh, preaching out of these uh, fake Bibles, like in Daniel chapter 3, where it says he was a son of the gods. You know, that's the story of Jesus saving us from hell. And it says, and the fourth man looked like the son of God. But the new Bible says it says a son of one of the gods. That's because they hate the true God. They hate the word of God. And they hate Jesus. That's why they changed those verses. Herod said, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. That's what these uh, fake preachers get up there and say. You know, they say that they want to worship God also. But really, all they want to do is kill the Word of God. They pretend that they're worshiping Jesus. But really, they just want to destroy Him. Jesus says, my words shall not pass away. Jesus also said, if you love me, you will keep my word. Uh, I don't know if they know what that verse means. But it means exactly what it says. If you love him, you will keep his word. You won't try to change it. In verse 16, or if you would, uh, yeah, look down at verse 16. I got my notes a little mixed up. It says, Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men 
In John chapter 10, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. They say we're radical for believing in the King James Bible. Because we're KJB only. King James Bible only. This is not a version. This is the Bible. Uh, I don't like calling it a version because it's not just another version. This is the King James. It's the, the Holy Bible. Before all these versions came out, it was just called the Holy Bible. After all the new perversions came out, they had to switch it to the King James Version. So they could... Uh, know which one it is besides all the other versions. In verse 27 of John uh, chapter 10, he says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. We don't accept a counterfeit word, and that's not radical. You know, is that radical to believe uh, that God's word will not pass away, and that's what we believe? In verse 5 it says, And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. See, any saved person, a truly saved person, who loves the word of God in one of these uh, churches where they're reading a false Jesus, they know that that's a stranger. Uh, it doesn't take a rocket science when somebody's reading out of the NIV that that's just a bunch of nonsense. Uh, you can tell that that's not uh, the Word of God. You know, but when we read the King James Bible, we know it's the Word of God. If you would uh, go back to Luke chapter 2. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17, it says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's what we're doing when we read the King James Bible. We're keeping the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus. Back in Luke chapter 2, our, our first, in, in verse 11 of uh, Revelation, it says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Counterfeit testimonies won't work. So if you're back there in Luke, Luke chapter 2, we're going to be in verse 1. It's Christmas, so we're going to read the real Christmas story, the birth of Jesus, in Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 1. It says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, 
Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. I went ahead and read those last two verses there just because we know it's the name of Jesus. There is no new name for Jesus, it's just Jesus. We speak English, so his name is Jesus. A lot of people say that celebrating Christmas is pagan, that it's not really Christian and not something that Christians should do. But we celebrate Christmas because it's the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And if they say we're pagan for doing that, then they're also saying that the angels of God are pagan. Because we just read that the angels of God came down and celebrated Christmas. Back in Matthew chapter 2, we learn that the wise men came and celebrated Christmas. And they brought gifts. So the wise men, according to them in the Bible, are pagan. No, they're wise men. They celebrated Christmas. And then these uh, shepherds, they came and celebrated Christmas. You know, so if you say that celebrating Christmas is pagan... You're saying what the Bible says is pagan. And we go by this Bible. They don't like the Bible. They want to uh, uh, create the Word of God in their own heart. What they want it to say. No, we celebrate Christmas to celebrate the birth of Christ. So Merry Christmas. Amen. And that's the end of my message.